We continue with the advanced features lectures. This lecture will focus on the simulation tool. In all of the previous lectures, we ignored most of the options in this screen. Actually, in this particular screen, there are few options that came to be due to a component called DSM, which is not shipped with the standard shipment of BRF+, and so it is not discussed in this course. Just for the curious ones among you, DSM stands for Decision Service Management, and it can be thought of an upgrade or an extra layer that extends the standard functionalities of BRF+. First, I want to explain the difference between the interpretation mode and the generation mode. To better understand the difference, you first need to understand how the repository of BRF Plus looks under the hood. Recall that the repository is where all the business rules and their parts are stored. In the case of BRF Plus, they are stored in numerous database tables. For example, the table presented here is one of the main tables. This table holds all of the basic information of all the objects in BRF Plus that are set as customizing objects. If I to take the ID of the resume check application, I can then see all the objects inside it. You can see that in this application, there are 43 objects in total. Here I can see their IDs, technical names, and their object types. For example, the first object is actually the application object. The third is an expression. The fourth is a function, and so forth. In this table, the information about the time of change and creation is also stored along with the user ID that made the change. I can even see here the access level of the different objects. In this case, all of the objects have application access level. Note that this table holds only up-to-date data. Historic information is stored elsewhere. This table is pretty straightforward. What about the actual business logic? Where and how is it stored? To get a feel for that, let's take one of the formulas. This formula is used for checking the number of pages criterion as part of the automatic resume check. It is composed of different parts or tokens. For example, the first parenthesis is a token. The next token is the pages number data element and so on. The formula tokens and their order is saved in the following table. If I to paste the idea of the formula we just saw, I should get a formula composition. This is what the formula looks like under the hood. You can see each one of the tokens and some additional information about them. For example, you can see that the first token is a bracket, the second is a data object, the fourth is a number, and so on. Now we can comprehend the meaning of the interpretation mode. Interpretation means that BRF Plus goes to the tables where the business logic is stored, such this table, selects the relevant data to the current business rule, and then interprets all the data that was retrieved into an actual computation. This teaches us that the interpretation mode is actually an inefficient way to run our business rules. In order to interpret a business rule logic, BRF first needs to access the database tables to get the object's composition. And we already learned that accessing the database is a very expensive operation in terms of performance. This comprehension leads us straight to the generation mode. To tackle the performance drawback of the interpretation mode, the generation mode was invented. The name of this mode stems from the fact that in this mode, BRF Plus automatically generates an ABAP code. The ABAP code that is generated by BRF represents all the logic of the business rule, 
and therefore it makes accessing the BRF database tables unnecessary. The code generation is done separately for each business rule. Once the code is generated, there is no point in regenerating it, as the generation process in itself is very costly performance-wise. For that reason, the code generation occurs only after some modification is done to at least one of the business rules objects. The generated code is stored as an ABAP class in the $temp package. The name of the class can be seen in the code generation tab in the functions maintenance screen. Right now, there is no generated class, as up until now, I ran the function only in interpretation mode. To generate a class for this function, I need to run it in generation mode. Now the name of the class appears, along with its creation date and validity period. If you want a quick peek to the generated code, all you need to do is copy the class name and enter it in transaction SE24. The ABAP representation of the business rule is found in the method called process pure. With the help of the comments in the code, you can see where each expression starts and ends. In the case of need, you may even debug this code as any other ABAP code. We are back in the simulation screen. Let's examine those options under the version section. The first radio button is also the default. Whenever this radio button is lit on, the last active version is the one who gets executed. This is fairly straightforward. The second option is kind of funny. It lets you run the business rule in its current form even though it is not activated. This option is open only when there is an inactive version of the object on which you want to perform the simulation. Due to the nature of inactive objects, this kind of run might end in errors or even a system failure. As for the third radio button, this is one of the coolest features of BRF+. This option provides us the ability to run old versions of the business rule. This can come handy in case of an interrogation of a suspicious result. You don't need to bother yourself with what number of the version you want to run. You simply state the effective date and time and BRF Plus automatically finds and executes the version that was active in this particular point in time. Notice that providing a time point where no active version was present will result in an error. Now let's continue to the next screen. Notice that I have selected the generation mode. In this screen, we can of course insert values to the input parameters. We can even save variants of different test cases and load them in a later time to check the effects of changes to the business rule. You can even load multiple test cases at once by importing an Excel file using the import test data button. At the top, we have two options of how to run the simulation. The default option is to get the final result, but we can also ask to see the intermediate steps that lead to that final result. In this screen, we can see the final result, but more importantly, we can see the processing steps. This is called the trace of the business rule. This particular scenario has few steps, but for more complicated scenarios, there might be many more. It is then helpful to collapse all the nodes and then drill down to the ones that are of interest. For example, suppose that I'm only interested in knowing how the decision tree was evaluated. You can see that the result was provided by node number 2. 
You can even open a pop-up window to look at the expression if you don't quite remember what is the second node. If needed, you may even go deeper in the trace to see exactly what sorts of evaluations were carried out inside the expression. In this case, you can see that the first node was evaluated and it happened to be a procedure call expression that called the method responsible for checking whether the text contained a mentioning of volunteering activity or not. Now let's go back to the function. What is this? There are now two generated classes. The reason I now have two generated classes is because I requested to see the trace of the simulation. In order to generate this trace, a different code was needed to be generated which was capable of making the trace. Notice the supports trace flag. As you might have guessed, the code that doesn't support the trace is the more efficient one. So this is the code that is run by default. The second code gets executed only if the caller explicitly asks for the trace. This sums up the tracing and simulation capabilities of BRF+. Needless to say that these are very important features. Without them, it would have been very difficult to verify the correctness of the business rules and to find the cause in cases where rules were found to be faulty. Moving on.